activities. So we'd like you to keep him in mind as we go on. Come on, click, there we go. So the early literacy theory emphasizes the natural unfolding of skills through the enjoyment of books, the importance of positive interactions between young children and adults, and the critical role of literacy rich experiences. We all want our children to read, obviously, look at that mama with her newborn, happens to be my daughter. Um, and early, speaking, listening, reading, and writing play crucial roles um, in school, and all four are interrelated and affect one another. Initially, reading and writing are dependent on oral language skills. Eventually, reading and writing extend oral language skills. So in 1997, David Yoder, Karen Erickson, and if you don't know that name, you should, all these names, and David Copenhaver authored a literacy bill of rights. It begins with the bold statement, all persons, regardless of the extent or the severity of their disabilities, have the basic right to use print. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh, he's too low or she's too low? No one's too low. Beyond this general right, there are certain literacy rights that should be assured for all persons. So those rights include, sorry, the right to the opportunity to learn to read and write. Um, and that goes on and on. There's about 15 rights, but the one that really resonates with us is the right to interact while, with others while reading, writing, and listening to a text. We're gonna be talking about shared reading um, throughout this presentation. Interaction involves questions, comments, discussions, and other communications about or related to the task. Most importantly, all persons have the right to teachers and other service providers who are knowledgeable about literacy instruction methods and principles. I noticed I that someone said they love the rights and we have a copy of those rights in our bonus folder as well, if you'd like to display them where you work. So we also want to presume potential, again, alluding to the fact that we've heard comments throughout our careers as, as uh, speech and language pathologists and OTs and so on, that a student may be too low to do this or that. We want to remember that we should presume potential for all individuals. This is a reminder and um, the provided resources in the form of an infographic that you can download. It was developed by speech and language pathologist, Lauren Enders. While she created it for users of communication systems and those who support them, the message resonates for all learners that every individual has the potential to communicate, learn, connect with others, and be a contributor to society. So when we adapt books, we make them accessible to all, including students who are English language learners, um, struggling students and readers, and we also make them engaging. Does accessibility in the planning stage sound familiar? Of course it does. Can anyone say UDL? I'm sure you've been hearing about UDL a lot back there in Oregon. Our Plants Grow From Seeds um, book, which is pictured following the physical science curriculum in elementary school, because we really wanted to point out these are not just horsey ducky books or the um, picture books that you see that you can buy on Amazon. You can adapt anything to make it accessible. So this is science curriculum. It's been adapted by adding tactile interest, as you can see by the pages. A pocket-sized version of the book has been printed, and a sequencing chart is provided to illustrate the life cycle of the plant using the same pictures that were found in the book. So we also want to talk about our own accessibility efforts in getting this presentation ready um, because we need to practice what we preach. We've listed our efforts to make this um, presentation accessible for those with a variety of learning styles and preferences and you can go through those at your at your leisure. So we, we always begin all our uh decision-making with a set framework and, and certainly our homage to, to dear joy here. Um, I, I swear, I use the set framework so frequently that, you know, it's almost like I would use it to, uh, to buy a car. It's such an important, I'm sure you've heard about it, but just to, just to um, reiterate, it's a student-centered approach. So before you begin with your special new tool, think about the student, the environment where the student's gonna need these improvements, 
the tasks that are needed to be adjusted and then decide on the tool. And as Joyce said, you don't come in with your super, numera super alpha numerator and uh, decide that it's gonna to apply to all students. We have links to that framework and those documents on this through this slide. And of course, UDL. Using the principles of UDL, it's possible to facilitate meaningful participation in literacy experiences by altering the access, the content, and materials as well as providing communication supports and opportunities to make connections through manip manipulatives and extension activities. So you guys know a lot about that, but we have to mention it just because it's also important. And that is manifested here, how we use SET and UDL to come up with the adapted books, kits. So in the first image, it's just a, a, a support is provided for all, the same support for all. And you can see that's not in the first uh, left side of that graphic, not effective. By making some adjustments, it's everyone can now access it. But isn't it even better to start from the beginning and proactively address that, every, that different needs are manifested? So remember that little infant that we saw reading with her mama? This is her at age four. Note the engagement in this picture. As Ben Franklin has stated, tell me and I forget, sounds like me, um, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So I guess uh, Ben was into UDL too, hey? I think so. Well, we're excited to introduce you to our first guest speaker and you're gonna hear a little bit about her journey, but this is a pictured on the screen is one of her adapted book kits and her tweet. Um, her name is Mindy Modek, uh, Brodecki. Mindy describes herself on Twitter as an AT resource specialist, always learning, autism mom and Nana, interested in everything special ed. We met Mindy several years ago at the Assistive Technology Conference in New England. She attended an, our session on adapted books, and as she stated, she was hooked. In her adapted books journey, she sought funding through Donors Choose to acquire a 3D printer and has adapted more than 30 or 40 books. She's also established her own lending library. So you're going to see a little bit more about Mindy on this page. Another one of my favorites. This one was all 3D penned, and it is the hungry. I mean, the uh, rainbow fish. We had a piece of scrapbook paper with the underwater sea uh, thing, and we took the rainbow fish and the um, the other things that we made that went with it, and we can use that as a as like almost like a um, storyboard, like a felt board. Only it's an interactive play mat, so that the teacher could use it to present the story, but also then the kids could get hands on interact with the different characters, talk about their characteristics. We even made a few scales that could come off of the rainbow fish and be put on the other fish so that they had that like the connection of what the scales were, how it, how they how the rainbow fish would share with the other fish. So um, in that we also um, encourage teachers to pair this with um, the book and the novel effects app that we learned about, um, we had gone to um, build a better book in, in Colorado. The University of Colorado um, Boulder has a program called Build a Better Book and they actually did workshops and you apply with a presentation of how you would share their information. And we were one of the teams from across the country that was chosen. And um, so they had brought in the developer of the novel effects app, which is free on their iPad, and that adds sound effects to the story. So it's adding another component. So what I try to do is look at this and like UDL it to death. So can we have a tactile component? Do we have an auditory component? Do we have a visual component? Is there an interactive kinesthetic component? And in pairing like technology, high tech with the low tech so that everybody can learn and, and develop that vocabulary. So. Um, we we the rainbow fish is in the novel effects app and we recommended that teachers do that um let me see there we go so did everybody hear mindy's comment i udl it till death and that just brings us to this slide on accessible educational materials. Look at the kinds of things that we do to make them accessible. Um, their instructional materials, including print that have been formatted and adapted to meet the individual needs of students with disabilities, which could include reconstructed print, braille, large print, digital text, audio, same things Mindy was talking about. This AIM uh, website is full of useful information and it's a, been updated and user-friendly, and it is linked in your Wakelet. 
So uh, media rich books are one way of, uh, of providing AIM. Uh, you can incorporate text, images, audio, and even video. And this Tuck Everlasting with the, um, with the photograph of the girl looking at the book is one of Tar Heel Reader books. And Sally's going to tell you about one of uh, the fans of Tar Heel Reader on the next slide. Right. And this is Franz. I wish you could meet Franz. And I, I really, really hope you go back to your wait to come watch it. This is, this is a video we discovered years ago, but it's just such a nice, simple way of illustrating the different ways that a switch user can help, uh, can be helped to adapt and access literacy. So I, we don't have time to show you today, but go back to the uh, wake it and see it on yourself. Do I hear Jack? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My dog has been left downstairs. My husband's gone on errands, so I apologize. As we've shared, you can see, uh, and as you can see by the example on the slide, adapted books come in many formats and can include picture symbols, photos, graphics from books, simplified text, textures, braille, and so on. A hard copy example pictured on this slide at the bottom is a book called No, No Puppy by Linda Burkhart. And we just want to point this out because you can see how simple it is. Um, pictured is a hand-drawn and colored puppy nibbling on a plastic spoon and the visual supported text that reads, don't eat the spoon. It's not rocket science. You don't even have to have a computer to create something like this. You want to choose books that provide a variety of input, cognitive content, and language. Props have a great potential too, don't they, Judy? Absolutely. Um, visual references help learners to understand events and characters depicted in the story. And for kids that um, we want them to become more active, they may require visual or tactile cues in order to, the, um, in addition to the simplified text. Our Fresh Fall Leaves book is on the wrong, I'm on the wrong slide. So okay, I do, ap I, I do apologize. Our Fresh Fall Leaves book includes pictures of students that have been, or children that have been laminated. They're attached to craft sticks, poked through a hole in the page so that they appear to jump on the leaves um, during the, the reading of the book. So what's a good starting point? Interactive children's books. You probably already have them on your bookshelves or in your home. Um, for example, the Busy Noisy Farm Sound Book. Various characters in the book are depicted as buttons to one side. When the button's pushed, a related sound is played. Think about books you might already have with texture, movable parts, such as pop-up books, uh, books with flaps, pull tabs, pull outs, or pull downs. We did mention Tar Heel Reader, but we also want to keep in mind that all these books, although you're starting with books that look uh, more childish, we want to make uh, adapted books available to all our students and be age respectful of that. So we have been in included um, a variety of resources for you, including a, a brand new one we just came across from New Jersey. And there are 50 downloadable PowerPoint books that are such as for Hatchet or Catcher in the Rye or Harry Potter. So we can make these books available to all our students that are included in the classes. You know, the, uh, Judy and I used to say that the reason we started this and we, yes, our students were all included, but we go into a high school history class and our friends in the wheelchair are in the back reading Clifford the Big, Big Red Dog while the others are studying the constitution. We have given you resources that you can use right away to make these things age respectful for all students. In the uh, New Jersey selection, these can be downloaded immediately and there's 50 different books, not to mention everything that Tar Heel Reader has to offer. And Judy will tell us a little bit more about Tar Heel Reader as well. If you have uh, adapted books for older readers, please share it in the chat right now. Uh, this link it will take you to the ones I was just talking about, and you can see that a separate piece has actually been adapted. So it's, it's nice to have these things available for all our students. Making books inter interactive is not simply to uh, read aloud to children. Just like Ben Franklin said, we want to make uh, students involved with it. So you do have a copy of the book uh, that's pictured on the top, which is very interactive. And um, th these props can be printed and used right away. We have uh, involved our student on the floor there by scooting down on her bottom and she reads a 
a page of the book every a square that she sits on. So it's been laminated with spaces in between and the lamination. And she's a kind of a wiggly learner. So this is lots of fun with her. And she loves to practice her reading that way. Some learners need visual reference. Uh, some need uh, those with low or blind, uh, vision, low vision or deaf or hard of hearing. We have ways of reaching all their needs. And thinking about Omari, he could read that Fanny book from his wheelchair and practice his uh, wheeling at the same time. Right, you know that uh, communication is important to me as a speech language pathologist, but I know, you all know it's not just a speech pathologist job to get communication. We're all involved in communication and we're all involved in literacy uh, throughout the day. And when target, sometimes it helps to start with repeated line books because our students may have the words they need to put to use, but they don't know how to put the words together. And repeated lines helps to teach folks what, how those pieces fit, fit into the puzzle to make a sentence. Does this noun go here and the verb go here? And when I make a question, I have to you know, switch those around. These repeated lines are a great way of planning that for our students. Well, Sally, um, I wanna- Go ahead, Dale, yeah, you're probably going to say the same thing. Go right ahead. There's a question in the chat from Julie about copyright permission. Oh, we're going to talk it, about that in one more slide. So all right. good question. Well, we're right on track then. Good question. So we've also provided you here with links on ways to bring communication into your literacy. So when you're doing shared communication or shared reading, make sure it's just not one-way communication and your student can communicate to you about the book as you're reading the book to the student. And notice the high contrast core vocabulary words. High contrast is another adaptation that's important to consider when you're adapting books. And again, all of these resources are free and downloadable. You don't have to recreate the wheel. It's all there for you in your resources. Um, we also want to give readers a way to choose books. And these are a couple ways to do that. You can, uh, the pictures can be found on Amazon and you can copy them out and just print them and have students choose manually or digitally. Um, you can make a library of books um, such as for book creator down at the bottom. You can create a hyperlink slide in PowerPoint and all the books in a single file. So that think about how to involve making it interactive, I guess. Okay, and Julie has, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sally. Okay. Um, technology can offer a way of presentation, differing presentation types. So, you know, it's easy to adapt books by paper, but also easy to do it on a screen because you can change, you can put in clip art, you can put in voices, you can put in sound effects, you can auto summarize, you can check the readability levels. All of these things, again, on the wakelet, you can provide text to speech. You can involve the students a little more directly and use their voices to read the books. So I just want you to think about those ways to adapt books as well. And there's our copyright. So uh, as Julie asked, is it okay to adapt a book? It is okay. The Fair Use Section 107 of the US Copyright Act is a defense against charges of copyright infringement. And this is Section 121 of the Copyright Act um, that allows for works to be reproduced and distri distributed in specialized format exclusively for the use of persons with disabilities. Here's the caveat though. You must have a, an original copy of the book if adapting it in any way to keep within the copyright laws. So you can't go out and adapt 300 books and not have a copy of the book. And when we put our kits together, we always included a copy of the, the, um, the original book along with the adaptations that we made. But your classroom library can have that as well. If you're doing things like uh, Harry Potter with the um, PowerPoint slides that you have in the New Jersey collection, as long as you have a copy of Harry Potter in your classroom or using with a student, that's fine too. So that's yeah. all good. So we're going to um, just give you a couple of resources on where you can find some of these summaries um, and uh, ways of simplifying the text um, to, to uh, make it accessible. The Paul V. Sherlock Resource Library contains materials for teachers to help students with severe disabilities participate in the general curriculum. They have both literacy and they do have some lesson plans that are physical science, etc., to get some ideas. Um, they offer printable adapted literature for all ages, some of which which um, contains symbolated text. And I'm sure you've heard some of the controversy about symbolated text. 
according to Erickson, Copenhaver, and others, symbolated text does not help readers learn to read. However, the use of graphic symbols to communicate what's being read is stressed. We have an article for you to review about um, simulated text and some of the research behind um, the effectiveness or non-effectiveness of it. Um, and then we also wanna point out some other ways that you can summarize. Uh, Rewordify is a site that simplifies text by replating, placing complex vocabulary with words um, uh, that are simpler to understand. Um, and these are really, this is a really useful site when adapting for older readers. They also contain a lot of literacy that's already been um, simplified. Um, they have a whole uh, separate library of text simplifications. If you need an on the spot solution, simply paraphrase. You can also replace the amount of text on a page with a simplified version on an index card or a sticky note. Um, Sheree has asked in the chat, can you tell me again the research that says symbolized text doesn't help uh, readers? So, um, yeah. You'll, you'll find a couple articles in our wakelet. One is by Beth Poss that su summarizes that, but the research really comes from UNC, the Center for uh, Literacy. What is it, CL? Sorry, Judy. Uh, Center for Lit Literacy and Disability Studies. And, um, and this is based on research that's included on Karen Erickson's uh, uh, and David Copenhaver's newest book. And what they've looked at is the fact that students don't necessarily learn from the symbols and that we should be teaching phonemic awareness as part of our literacy and learning. So um, I would probably want to refer you specifically to the article rather than try to paraphrase it during this. Um, right. Right. this presentation it's in our bonus, that's in our bonus folder too right judy i think that i know that yes but yes Fox article is okay good thank you for good questions thank you thank you for excellent jumping. um so can you recognize the difference in legibility through the use of different fonts or colors so sometimes all you have to do is consider how the text appears during uh, on the page and aim has a lot of information about this think about highlighting changing background color or contrast increasing line word or character spacing or even adjusting the margins which reduces the number of words the student must visually track across the page you can also add audio and that equals UDL. It's engagement and multiple means of representation. The kid on the page is using a push button book. He finds the button with a picture matching one on the page, pushes the button, here's the sound uh, or here's the name of the pictured item depending on the books. He Notice he has a voice output device right in front of him. He locates the same item on his voice output um, device. So he's also practicing his, his vocabulary skills. Um, another way of adding audio is to use a talking photo album. They can be used as a foundation for book adaptations. You can record the page. Um, the students can be in control. Um, and you can also add props. Uh, in this example, we have a talking photo album um, that has been used to provide scaffolds to the story Hatchet. We also used a sign language to help adapt some of our books. We've given you a resource there for ASL stories. But the inset on the blue horse, blue horse, what do you see? Um, we used uh, high school students who were taking sign language as their foreign language requirement. And they actually filmed themselves signing the book. And then we could insert that video right into the PowerPoint of the book. So it was a pretty tricky way of, of uh, again, adapting for those purposes. You can also just add tactile interest. That was one of the first ones I made, adapted books I made up on the right was the, thanks to the dollar books at the book, show, book fairs that we have in the library. I just bought two copies of the same book and cut one apart and adapted it with uh, popsicle sticks and a magnifying glass and things like that to help adapt the book and become more engaging. But you can do removable icons and miniatures and even just add cotton balls to the sheep to make it more engaging. You can find props when you want to use props. I say it's, it's important. We don't want to make your job any easier. This Kids Club printable story props, you'll find, you know, I wish I knew how many. All of these resources we give you, it's not just one or two things. There are several, many, um, I think hundreds maybe applies to Kids Club. You have props, you have resources that you can use while you're telling these stories. 
Um, you could also find uh, authors such as Jan Brett have things on their website that can be used as you're teaching those stories as well. And you can find props anywhere. Um, our friend Mindy uh, posts on Twitter where she, she'll find one good prop and it'll expand and suddenly she'll have a whole new book kit about community helpers. So Dollar Tree is a great place to go for props as well. And it's also fun to follow Mindy on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> We've left her Twitter handle at the end. So yes, all of these, I'm glad you mentioned that. All of these things are in the uh, copy of the presentation. She would love it if you reached out to her. She's a ball of fire. She's done all of this in the last two, two or three years. It's been amazing. At any rate, Kids Club, back to Kids Club. Not only do they have props, but they have books you can print out. They have read-alouds. They have different uh, languages as well. It's, it's a real bonus kind of site. So you, you definitely want to check out Kids Club. So let's think about Omari again. Sally's going to tell you a little bit about ways of making things more accessible. Right. So here you can see how we've made things more accessible. As you all know, and you've taught me that sometimes the, the changing the plane of what is being read will make it more accessible. And we did that by just turning a binder inside out in a three ring notebook or making a PVC frame and hanging from it or adding page fluffers. And that's what's down in the bottom picture. And we just put paper, uh, paper clips or popsicle sticks or um, insulation, foam insulation to make those pages more accessible. We just were watching a, somebody else's presentation and they actually put numbers on those popsicle sticks and those page fluffers, which is great to access the page you're looking for. So another way to build in another part of that and you can add stability to these things and make them more accessible that way. So begin with free resources or using what you got, or as Caroline Musselwhite has said, dance with the one what brought you. So in looking at that, we're looking for text alternatives on the next slide, such as pictures, a timeline, or other graphic maps, charts, and tables to help clarify um, or highlight essential information. And as you can tell on the page, all of these resources were just kind of cobbled together. We had a, um, one of those Ellison die cutters for illustrating the plants. We had um, maps that were around the, the um, school building. Um, and then a lot of things online in terms of resources. Students can actually increase their knowledge base and real world application with photos of examples of their own work or environment. And when you incorporate the student photos and drawings, it um, completely personalizes and engages the reading activity. I'm just looking at Deb's note that the uh, Rose in Roseburg there, they brought in high school students to adapt books for the library. What a wonderful idea that is. Because it, it does seem like a daunting task when you try, try to uh, build a library, but if everybody pitches in, then you can be yeah, then you can share. We also we did a have, we did a maker club in Loudoun County. Uh, we had a maker club that recorded the books. They used the reading pens and things like that, um, and they also um, did some of the scanning and some of the binding for us. You know, I want to shout out to Deb too because the uh, the books that were adapted were actually placed in the county library. Or the, the city library. And that's so, than... so important in terms of, uh, of uh, disability awareness, of, of having everybody understand uh, why we do certain things and um, seeing it modeled without being it explicit, it's more of an implicit thing, kind of helps people um, incorporate that. Sometimes people don't want to be told what to do, but when they see it and they, they figure it out themselves, um, they automatically start making those modifications and ad adaptations. That's a fantastic um, program. Um, Deb, have you done a program on that? So they co-sponsored a workshop in the Roseburg Library in the chat. So right. yeah. yeah. At OTAP, we have a 3D printer. And so they have done another workshop uh, using the 3D printer with the same type of group uh, because they are AT makers. And so it's just kind of giving the awareness of uh, the whole idea of adaptation uh, to a, a young group of people who are going to be going out in the world knowing these things. Right. Fantastic. I, lo I love using student pictures in the in the work we do too, because that's certainly a way to involve them, engage them. You can all guess what this story is we're acting out, but um, we don't have time to show you, but I want you to be sure to go to uh, power, think about PowerPoint and think about how you can build some of these on the fly kinds of things. It's such a great way to summarize your day with a student is to take some pictures throw them into a PowerPoint and then print out, you can print out, you know, four to a slide and actually have a hardcover book to take home 
and show them what they did today. And they can, they can relive and relearn and review the activities of the day. You can add captions, you cre can create copy or text and, and keep them all in a folder and then have them forever. Um, we use PowerPoint because it is a universally used power uh, platform. You can create and view books um, uh, digitally as well as printing them out in a variety of formats. So here's just three different, these are all PowerPoint slides, but one was the mini book that Judy held up at the beginning. Uh, one was, uh, it's a flap book, so you have questions and answers underneath the flap, and one that you can actually make it into a, a spinny um, wheel kind of uh, aspect to the PowerPoint slide. Their PowerPoint's compatible with smart boards, can be used with or without internet, and comes in a variety of shapes and sizes, which is great as well. Um, many folks don't realize, this is again on a PC, unfortunately, not a Mac, but PowerPoint on a PC has a terrific photo album feature that's been there for years, but makes it so easy to build a PowerPoint and to insert. The text boxes are already there. They'll size your pictures to fit, whether you want one or two or four pictures on a slide. There's a, there's a great tutorial on the web, on the uh, Wakelet. I can't tell you, I'm, everybody we've shown this to jaw drops and said, I didn't know it could be that easy. So take, the, take a moment to learn about the PowerPoint photo album. We can't do it here though, sorry. Google Slides is also a way to um, use, instead of PowerPoint, you know, it's, I, I don't find it quite as versatile yet as PowerPoint, but Judy and I couldn't do our job without it now, without <laughs> Google Slides, because Judy's in Michigan and I'm in Virginia and we used to sit side by side in our, in our office and work on some of these things after work. And now because we're so far away, we do all our work through Google Slides to collaborate. So that's another way, way to, um, to build in accessibility. On this slide as well as uh, some re a really nice collection of Google tutorials for you and for your students, just as a bonus. And that's on, uh, listed on the slide. So Tar Heel Reader, if you haven't seen it before, is a free growing library of accessible beginning level reader uh, for students of all ages. There are books on topics such as Frozen or Burps, and then they go all the way up to great chapter summaries with photos for chapters of classic literature that are part of Common Core. Books can be read online with a mouse, a keyboard, or a switch. Color and contrast can be adjusted for students with CVI, and speech can be enabled so with the book can be read aloud. Um, when you're writing with Tar Heel Reader, you can also um, customize your picture or use their available pictures. But there's more, and this is fantastic. Tar Heel Shared Reader is a new feature in the Tar Heel Reader series. It focuses on interactive book reading and contains the same features as the original version, plus these additional options. The goal is to empower teachers to use an evidence-based approach to shared reading, to promote their students with inter or to provide their students with interactive access to grade level content while improving communication and literacy skills. So we're gonna show you just a tiny sketch of what the controls look like. You can specify which core words you're targeting while reading the book so that these appear in the strip below each page. That enables you to use those in modeling the symbols for those words as you discuss and read the story. You can create sample phrases and sentences to model using the target core words and put them in the comments area, which can be customized to highlight the particular words your learners are focusing on. And that's a little uh, uh, like a dialogue box in the upper right hand corner. But the Tar Heel Shared Reader provides free access to quality professional development so you can learn all about this and more. They have materials and technology that support the implementation of shared reading. There's a section on instructional planning and reflection that has forms that teams can use to, um, to plan their shared reading experiences and create environments that support learning and implement them with fidelity. But then again, Tar Heel, I can't even get over what they are doing. You can use Tar Heel gameplay to create a timed switch version of most videos, including videos of books that are read aloud. You can link to a video on YouTube and create a switch, a touch screen, a keyboard or mouse accessible version of the video 
um, in seconds. The huge benefit of gameplay is being able to make an activity your student is specifically interested in. You can see by the controls on the right, and those are just a screenshot of the controls. It's not part of the book itself. Um, you can set up the stop intervals or have them occur randomly. The targets to resume play can be placed around the screen to help eye gaze uh, users learn to access different quadrants. The link at the top of the page uh, up of the slide is live and it will take you to a gameplay I made from a Mo Willems book so that you can see how it works. Well, we've also got some resources there for me and Bean. You can switch from the bottom, you can access from the bottom and those are all free things too for switch users. So here's another way of putting a book together. It's a website called Book Creator. It's a simple online tool for authoring awesome books and teaching resources, combining text, images, audio, and video. You can do everything that you can do in PowerPoint or Chrome using this. It's compatible with uh, computer, iPad, or Chrome. Um, you can join um, Book Creator and create your first 40 books for free, and then it's subscription-based. There's a copy of a book I made for my granddaughter. Um, I uploaded my own picture and added text. And then Book, book Creator will coach you through the, op the uh, options that you can use. And it included the option of adding hyperlinks and alternative text to um, accompany the image. So Sally kind of alluded about what else you can do with some of these books. You can um, create them digitally, but then you can go ahead and print hard copies and turn them into manipulatives. Um, you can make individual activities or worksheets to address specific IEP concepts, even make a folded eight page mini book um, as I showed you at the beginning of the session. And it's kind of pictured right in the middle of your slide. Um, you can see the layout at the bottom right hand side of the slide. And then with a simple folding technique, it folds into eight pages. So think about how you could use them in your own practice, whether you're an OT, speech, uh, para, uh, PT, what could you use eight pages that fit in your pocket for? Yeah, exercises or, or uh, sequencing or any number of things. So you have a template for all that in your uh, uh, bonus folder as well. And we do have a mini book just for this presentation that you can print out and it'll have all the resources and the links that how to find all those uh, resources again. So in personalizing the kinds of uh, books that you make, not only for your um, students, but for the kinds of work that you do, um, we wanted to show you a few of the many books developed to support in-school community-based instruction, which were created by an occupational therapist. Her name is Deborah Schwinn. She's from Loudoun County. And you're going to be hearing from her later in this Equitize Learning series. You're going to actually be learning a little bit more, I think, about her um, school-based community instruction. They contain photos and text specific to the activity or learning objective. Um, think about the population you serve and what kind of book you might make to support your shared goals. Um, my favorite book adaptations are tangible books with added features for small fingers to explore. We've talked about the props that you can find at craft thrift stores, dollar stores, or else your own kid's toy box. Um, so we're just going to breeze through uh, a couple of these um, tangible books that you can make. We're not going to go um, into detail because they um, uh, you've got all the information. I just wanted to quickly talk about baggy books because you'll see a lot of these books are contained in bags. And baggy books are the first page that we have. And they're really an inexpensive and easy to make container that's waterproof and durable for the content of your choice. So you can use pages from a small book, photos, create a, a book on the computer. You can use um, uh, uh, tactile things. You assemble and bind the baggies together with the opening on the outside so you can even change out the pages. So as you can see from the next uh, few samples, there's a, a squishy book made out of baggies. There's an object book made out of baggies. It kind of explains the, the technique behind it. Uh, the only thing I wanted to really say about experience books is it really exemplifies the shared reading experience. And these are things that um, are um, constructed by someone who's uh, uh, intimately involved with the, with the child and has had an experience with them, such as making pudding or um, learning to tie shoes or whatever. And the book is made with the actual objects that are used in that experience. And then there should be always text, regardless of the student's current um, reading ability. And there should be a, a beginning and a middle and an end. Um, and then the object book um, uh, stimulates conversation about that experience. 
So then the next thing is just a, a story box. It's a collection of items in a box or a bag that corresponds to the items on, uh, in the story. Um, there's lots of manipulatives that reflect this story and you can learn more about them um, from the link at the bottom, see one, uh, uh, wonderbaby.org. The last thing that we wanted to talk about, I think, before we talk about themes, and I think we really want to pause and talk about our, um, our case study, is the kind of expansion activities that you can use, um, such as role playing, singing, graphic organizers, and puzzles. Acting out stories as our little firefighters are doing in the lower right hand picture provides students with opportunities for engagement, representation and action and expression. And does that sound familiar? Of course it does. Again, UDL. I think Sally's gonna to talk to you a little bit about um, themes and then we're gonna talk about our case study. So I just want, I just you, want, to want, you, to, want you to know about the, uh, again, a resource that you have in your bonus folder. And these are 18, 18 different lesson plans that are around uh, common books. Uh, this one is a it's very hungry caterpillar and it addresses a number of curricular activities as well. These are ready for you to use. You may find some dated equipment uh, uh, like uh, old uh, Big Macs and things like that, but it's all good stuff on how you can expand one book into so many different activities and curricular topics. So we wanted to meet, we wanted you to meet Becky Jones. She is the Accessible Educational Materials Excel Consultant for Tech Access of Rhode Island. Um, you're going to need to watch the video, but she makes these adapted books kits. They're thematic based. They have um, all sorts of activities and many, many, many of them are free for you because even though the books themselves have to be checked out of Tech Access Rhode Island, she's posted links to everything that you need to reproduce the same book kits on your own. Um, and there is a list of her adapted books and kits that you can do um, found in our bonus folder. Don't miss the video when she talks about her work. Just one last way this might be engaging is we're doing Zoom right now. I could be having a PowerPoint playing of a storybook behind me. So you can bring your, literally bring yourself right into the book if you're doing a Zoom class with your students. So we're gonna move along and talk about our friend, where is he? There we go. Um, Julie, of course you can share uh, the bonus folders with life skills teachers, as long as you also include our contact information so we can help um, answer any questions that they might have. We would love it if you'd share. So now having experienced this, we have a ton, a ton, a ton more things to talk about in terms of how you put these books together for Kit, but we wanna revisit Omari and we want to brainstorm him from your perspective, your angle, what you've learned from here or what you um, bring to the table to this discussion. Um, what kinds of things might you do to make um, the reading experience more accessible and more enjoyable for Omari? Uh, just a reminder, you've got that list. Um, Sal, that's okay to turn that back. You don't have to turn that back on. Um, he's a nine-year-old with spastic diplegia. He's social. He likes to do things himself. Um, he likes the computer and tablets. Um, he's got some motoric difficulties, some visual difficulties, and he shuts down during reading. He also is an English language learner. So let's brainstorm Omari a little bit, turn off your mics if, or turn on your mics if you like, and tell us some of your thoughts on, on how you might uh, um, change the reading experience to Omari to make it more accessible. You're welcome to use the chat as well. Please join in. What would you do for Omari? Oh, oh, could you tell us how you might use Pictello? I think it's a great idea, Rosanna. Yeah, maybe create a story around, um, maybe take some photos of him at school or of things that he likes at school and then create a simple book with Pictello where he could activate the pages with the touch or with the switch or. Great idea. Again, uh, Rosanna is focusing not only on access but engagement. So it's a real perfect storm of UDL, excellent. Other suggestions? Oh, Nicole, write an accessible about me book where he can turn the page and have voice output. Great idea and introduces himself to every other person, all the other folks in his class so that they know how to uh, interact best with him as when what he likes and what he doesn't like. What a and great they, also, they also know that he can read. 
Because that's one of the things I, I don't know whether you remember from your elementary school experiences, but you knew the bluebird reading group versus the cardinal reading group. And a lot of times kids will will um, will kind of um, discriminate against children or talk about them if they're not doing the same things. And so having a variety of, of ways of interacting with books is so important for for the social emotional aspect of learning. Other ideas. This is community. Good job. Uses home language to communicate. Yes, yes. What about objects? Would he benefit by having objects to, that go along with his books? Because they're understandable in any language, right? These activities can incorporate so many goals. You're right, Deb. Tactile ones, good idea. Other thoughts, what about page turning for Omari? What might you do? We know that he's got some fine motor difficulties. Would you have him work on, on a tablet since he likes tablets? Would you use page fluffers? Would you maybe just stabilize the book? I'm wondering too, um, about his vision. Oh, direct touch. Maybe the pages of the book spread over the classroom and have Omari wheel to read the pages with support. Love that. One thing that excites me with all of these answers is what it happens for the student. You're talking about other see, students seeing competency for reading with a smile on the kid's face who is now able to participate when they weren't before is, is enough to get you hooked on finding ways to make these things happen. Absolutely. I agree. And if Sally goes back, to, does any, oh, have a gen ed student read with Omari and talk about the book. Wonderful. And really, then you teach them that shared reading process. And, and you can go back to the Tar Heel Reader um, shared reading uh, resources for looking at suggestions on how, what kinds of things to ask Because that, uh, what is it, um, getting in the car, you comment, you ask, and you respond as a reading partner. Um, so uh, that helps um, it to be um, a more collaborative experience. And thank you, um, seating position and table access will be important to fully optimize his ability to turn pages. You're right. And it, it may affect him for seeing too, if there's a glare on the, on the page or if um, he doesn't have those postural accommodations to tilt his head and his eyes and his focus towards the page. So we wanna go on to the next slide to help you think about adapting books a little bit more. Um, this might help you think about creating an adapted book or a lit kit um, with the first step to plan ahead, not only in terms of text and pictures, but for reader diversity. Because just because Omari's been targeted doesn't mean that there's other kids in the, in the classroom um, that may need uh, a different way of presenting that information. If you adopt, adapt for Omari, everybody wins. It's that multiple means of representation that Dave Eddyborn um, advocated. So this is his uh, diversity blueprint. He um, uh, suggests that we think about receptive language, background knowledge, reading, decoding, comprehension, and so on. I'm not going to read the chart. Uh, we want to kind of go through and give you a couple of more examples, uh, give you a chance to answer questions or ask any additional questions. We also have a very, um, at the beginning of a very moving video about another book builder that we'd like you to meet. Right. So I'm going to go through I'm going to go through quickly here some other samples, but you can see how we, uh, it, you can explore these pictures on your own, but just some ways that we build out some kits. This one all fits into a pizza box, but all the different functions and concepts you can address with a pizza pizza story. Um, we included a literacy theme planner for you to use. This is a great resource to use uh, for free literacy resources is Sparklebox. Um, you can also, uh, Melissa and Doug have resources on their website that you can use to incorporate into your lessons. And then we had a science lit kit and um, you can use Reading Rockets uh, website to help you with that. 
or a math lit kit. So you can see we've expanded a variety of ways. We just have a few minutes to meet dear Hannah. And we'd also like you to take this opportunity to, um, uh, if you have any questions, please enter them into the chat. Please, please, please uh, contact us. We've, I know we've covered a whole lot of information here. We love to discuss this more with you. As you can tell, we're pretty passionate about it. So uh, please contact us. And our Hi, contact and information is on the last slide. Technology specialist for Greeley Evans School District 6 in Greeley, Colorado. And uh, I got my start in adapted books when I worked on the Loudoun County Assistive Technology team with Judy and Sally and lots of other really wonderful people. And really the foundation of what I know, um, I established it there. And I am so grateful for that experience and how I've been able to take what I've learned and bring it out here um, to my current school district and just run with it and create our own lending library. It's been really exciting. Um, the My favorite book that I've adapted, I think was The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Um, it was the very first book kit that I created in Loudoun and I just remember wanting to soak up as much knowledge as I possibly could um, to create a really wonderful kit um, to share with our district out there. and. And it, it just became such a wonderful learning experience. And so that book just really holds a special place in my heart. Um, what I found to be most rewarding from this experience in creating adaptive literacy is I think the time and space that it creates for staff and service providers to be collaborative. Um, I think so often we're just go, go, go. And I think even within my own team, there's three of us and we just don't always have the time to sit down and and create and, and share ideas and just make fun things for our students to, to engage with. Um, and these adapted books and these creating these kits has really helped carve out the time for us to do that more often. Um, and I think it also opens up um, a lot of discussion between between other teachers that don't necessarily get to see each other ever. Um, and hey, that I you know used this kit or created this little Thing to go along with it. Do you want to try it um, with your student at your school? I mean, that's been really neat to see. Um, and then, of course, seeing our students engaged with the material and, and have a good time with it is always great as well. So when we were creating our own uh, library literacy kits out here, um, we had some, some goals in mind. Um, the biggest issue that we wanted to address Sorry. was that whole notion, and I know we've all heard it over and over again, that there's not enough time, not enough resources. I am not sure what to do with this kid. This kid, I can't get engaged. Um, and we wanted to address all of those common concerns that we kept hearing over and over and over again. Um, we also, of course, wanted to make sure we're providing um, more accessible student, or I'm sorry, more accessible materials for our students. Um, we're really big on universal design for learning out here. Um, we want to make sure that we're providing material for our students that's rigorous, especially for our students with really complex needs. They, they have a right to that rigorous material. Um, and we want to make sure that our students, again, especially those with those complex needs, that particularly when they're in the gen ed setting, that they're having really engaging, meaningful participation and not just sitting there existing and breathing the same air as their peers. And I think that these literacy kits have opened some doors to a lot of our students and really given them some really great um, opportunities to do that. I'm afraid I'm going to stop Hannah there. There's more to listen to, but I think I think she you can see her passion and you can see how much she's gained from participating and building a an adapted books library. So team, it is you have given everyone so much to think about, and I love every time you do it, give a presentation. The resources that you offer uh, for free uh, keeps people from having to uh, go back and reinvent a wheel. So thank you so much for that. And as you know, many of those who are with us today are therapists uh, working with uh, our kids who might have orthopedic and other uh, access issues. Uh, but the accessible educational materials is, is everyone has a role, as you said. It, this is a gen ed thing. It is a first uh, level tier one support, making sure that our kids can access. And so when we think about inclusion, these are the ways that our kids can learn about the same topics with the materials that work for them. 
It is so exciting, uh, as some of you may have heard Gail and I on our soapbox, because we are part one of the seven states who are um, who are part of the current cohort with the National AIM Center in working with developing statewide processes. It goes across the lifespan. It starts with our early learners and it goes all the way to uh, the point we are in our own lives, uh, or a little older. But we want to make sure that uh, as, as our early folks, knowing that access is more than just uh, handing them uh, a tool. It's really thinking about how are they going to get the most use out of them and making it accessible. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited and, and Gail give you an opportunity to reflect to the Judy and Sally have made themselves very accessible to you uh, from this point forward. Uh, we have our recording we'll be sharing with you and watch for them. They'll probably be at a conference near you leading the workshop. Gail, anything you would like to add? Um, you know, I've been thinking since about the middle of this presentation about one of the things that I love about the work that we do with kids with significant uh, disabilities and also the work that we do with um, accessible educational materials and, and uh, curriculum is how generous people are. And Sally and Judy, you have really exemplified that generosity today and just taking everything that you know and sharing it with all of us so that we can maybe move forward to a new next step. It'll be exciting. I'm hearing things like 3D printers and, and some, I've never heard of a 3D pen before, so I have to go look that up as soon, as, awesome. we're, as, soon as we're done. And I want to say thank you for your generosity today. Well, we, we want to say thank you. And we stand on your shoulders as well. You know, we've, we've learned throughout, 